Hi, my name is Amaya and I'm a musician and acoustician. And I perform as a solo act called Mod the Moth, where I play the piano, sing and use sound processing and live looping. I wanted to make a video about this last topic for a while, but I always felt it was a bit redundant, since there's so many amazing videos on live looping on YouTube already. However, for the last year or so, I've been using a setup with which I'm finally happy and which has recently got a big update. So this seemed like a great time to make something which serves a bit as a demo of what I do live and also explains some of the updates to the software. The video has a couple of sections too, so feel free to skip anything that's not interesting or it's just too basic. So my current setup is built around a DAW called Reaper and its native looping plugin, which is called Super8. There's lots of documentation and videos on how Super8 works, how to route tracks in your Reaper sessions to separate and affect all of the different inputs or instruments you might want to use, and also on how to build a Reaper project which connects to any MIDI controllers, like such as these, that you might need. So I won't be talking about this in detail, but I'll link some of the, my favorite uh, videos below. For the sake of context and sanity though, in case some of you have no idea what Super 8 and Reaper looks like, but are still interested, I'll quickly explain some basics. So this is the track screen of Reaper, and just like in any other door, you can create a number of tracks. In this case, you see me recording the voiceover for the video, and I have created another track below it. This new track is where I will be hosting my very simple one input looper. I do this by routing the microphone above into the track and just dropping the Super 8 looper into the track itself. Already done it here, but just for the sake of uh, consistency, I'll just show again what this looks like. Just look, go here, look for Super 8, and that's the guy, add. So Super 8 looks like a square of boxes where the gray ones are independent input channels where we can record loops and the colored boxes below are different functions which apply to the loops that we have recorded in these channels. If I extend the plugin a bit like this, I can now see a couple of other functionalities appearing as smaller boxes inside the gray channels. The main ones obviously are record play, play stop, here we have reverse and fade. The first three, record play and reverse are MIDI mappable and you can do this, you can specify the channel number by clicking or two finger clicking on Mac uh, on it, like goes from off to a random number here, CC, control change, and then just dragging up or down until we find the channel number that we're looking for. You can also save any of the settings you have specified for uh, an instance of Super 8 by clicking the plus sign here Save preset. You can see that I already have uh, quite a few here, which correspond to some of some of my songs uh, that I use in Mod the Moth. So, just a quick demonstration of what this looks like. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. For the default setup I have right now, my looped vocals are coming only out of the left channel. Uh, but I can use a pin connector to move stuff around. And I can also link the boxes to create a stereo channel. One, two, three, four. 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 One, two. So those are some basic demonstrations of what the looper can do. So for my Mod the Moth uh, setup at the moment, I would uh, I have channels one, two, three, and four being my first phrase. Uh, one and two are my left and right uh, piano, and three and four are my stereo vocal main vocal. Then five, six, seven, and eight are my phrase two, and they have the same structure. So why am I making this video? Uh, a while back, I was talking to my colleague and friend, Jonathan Kemp, about Reaper and how I was using it in my live set. I mentioned that I was really missing a fade out stop option, which is something that all the previous looping systems I had used had. 
I also mentioned a couple of small bugs I had noticed in the plugin and how I was bypassing them in a relatively awkward way. So Jonathan had recently done some coding modifications to the video processor plugin in Reaper. Since many of the native plugins on Reaper are editable, you can actually go here onto edit and some a bunch of code opens. Um, there's stuff that uh, you can change. Um, actually, for Super 8, someone's created a 16 pin, so 16 channel instance of Super 8 as well. So that's just that's just one example. So Jonathan suggested having a look at whether the fade out stop button could be added to Super 8. The coding for this uh, plugin, though, uh, was is very compact, and although Jonathan very impressively managed to make some progress, we ended up messaging Justin Frankel about it. And because Jonathan had already been in contact with him, he replied super quick and we discussed a bit why a fade stop button would be great and how to do it in the most intuitive way uh, for users who, like me, came from using other looper, looping methods. So Justin made a couple of updates to it and sent it over. We tested it and I'm super grateful for this. And I think that this thing is basically unstoppable now. <laughs> So on to the actual updates. In the Reaper download page, we can see the additions of this last version. First one being the fade out edition, which I will explain in a bit more detail in a minute. But also a glitch has been fixed, uh, along with the performance of the reverse function, which tended to create clicks due to issues with the crossfade design. The second bullet point might also be interesting to those of you who linked channels for stereo purposes in several instruments, just like I explained uh, before. In particular, I had stereo piano in channels 1 and 2 and stereo vocals in 3 and 4. Basically, the problem was that if you wanted to trigger record on these two stereo instruments at the same time, by mapping the record play button to the same MIDI channel, like this, here uh, we have it mapped to channel 96 and channel 96 here as well. The instruments would start oscillating between record and play when trying to overdub. So you would hit record and then overdub and instrument one, for example, would start overdubbing, but instrument two would be sent into play. So this doesn't happen anymore in this version, which is pretty great. There's also been some changes to the shape of the fades, which have been swapped from exponential to quadratic. Uh, but for my personal use of uh, the of this plugin, to be honest, it's not something I've noticed too much. So faded stops. This is something which I used in all the loopers, which offered it to me in the past, uh, namely the Boomerang and the Boss RC505, and which I made do in Super 8 by giving up the right hand of my piano parts to control the faders when needing to do so. However, sometimes this just doesn't work in a song. If you're a musician who needs to use both hands, or if you need to move away from your instrument, for example, if you're switching between one instrument and another, from an arrangement point of view, having a faded out stop is really necessary. So in this version of Super 8, we see that the fade box has been added onto the top part of the channel, and that clicking and dragging it up and down changes the length of the fade. So clicking with uh, left click and then uh, right click or two finger click changes the, the length of the fade. So that goes from uh, eight to off. And if I right click down, I can go to one phrase or fractions of the phrase. For a long fade, uh, you can choose an integer number of times to repeat the phrase as it decays up to 32. And for a short fade, something which anyone is likely to need unless they are wanting a super clean and synced transition to a new part without the loop, you can choose fractions of the loop. This is especially interesting if, for example, your old phrase and your new phrase have clashing harmonies, but you don't really want the old loop to just suddenly disappear and leave a big gap. So this button isn't mappable, but I personally don't think that's necessary. If you need any of your channels to change how they behave in different songs, or even mid-song, you can save all of the different behaviors as presets in the Super 8 window itself here. So that's kind of it. Here's the solo live arrangement for my song Finisterre using the latest version of Super 8. I'm using an Addictive Keys VST plugin for my piano on an FP4 Roland controller. 
And to trigger samples, looping, and do live mixing, I use a Korg Nano Control 2 and a Blackstar LifeLogic foot switch.